Welcome, this is my video review of Saiyajin Mod 11 for the LG G2 D800, which is the AT&T variant that I'm using here. This is my personal cell phone and my daily driver. When I started this test, I used Snapshot M3, and I used that for a good day and a half um, with testing, and then I went to the Saiyajin Mod 11 Nightlies. I did the February 12th and February 13th, as you can see here, I'm still on the uh, February 13th build. And I'm also using the stock kernel. I want to take a moment and talk about kernels, though. Other kernels, the Doctor's Kernel and Acer's Kernel, which is PAKE, um, do not function very well with this ROM at all. In fact, uh, doing simple tasks like scrolling freezes up the phone and causes it to reboot in some cases, especially in Facebook. Try to run benchmarks uh, gets you the same result. Uh, it reboots the phone, locks it up and reboots the phone. Trying to change voltage settings in Trickster mod also sometimes reboots the phone. You're catching a theme here. It keeps happening. I did manage to squeak out one benchmark with uh, the 5.3 version of PAKE though, and I'll show you that later. Talking about why these kernels don't work, the doctor took some time to explain why his in particular doesn't work, and it kind of makes sense for the other kernels as well, is that Saiyajima continues to move itself away from AOSP base. These kernels that are coming out for the LG G2 are usually made for AOSP or even Omni based ROMs. So as Saiyajima continues to move its way further away from AOSP, you're going to have these instabilities and these issues and, and that's what to be expected. But the stock kernel that comes with Saiyajima for this phone performs really well. It's fluid, it's fast, I didn't have any freezes or lockups, which is quite the opposite of what I expected going into this review. The last time I used Saiyajin Mod on the LG G2 was CM11 back in December, and it was full of instabilities. It was full of crashing. In fact, if you have time, you can go to the forums and you might get a good couple laughs at how bad it actually was for a lot of users. And there are those that will say, oh, I had no problems with it, and uh, I don't know how they pulled that off, but, uh, you know, Every phone is different, and so it could have happened that maybe it did work well for their phones, but in my testing it did not. Uh, but this build from the art from the Snapshot M3 and the two Nightlies that I've tested have, has been great. It's been on par. And one of the nice things about Saijamod, of course, I'm sure you already know, is the ability to quickly check for updates, download those updates, and you can select whether you want to do Nightlies or stable builds, etc., download those and install them. However, I did not see an option to make a clean install. So I didn't see an option that lets you uh, wipe the system and wipe the data along, along with the cache and Dalvik. So you're going to get dirty flashes when you install it this way. And uh, Saijamod, from what I've read in the forums and what I've seen so far, seems like they kind of like that way they built it that way. Um, for me, I still say that if you want to report problems, this downloads to a CM updater folder on your SD card. All you gotta do is boot into your recovery and you can install it from that folder. Let's go through the settings here. I know I did this when I first did the install, but for those of you that didn't see that video, with Saiyajimon you get these lock screen settings here. So here's your screen security and some of these settings are still found in the security section so there is a kind of a duplication there. Here's your battery status, okay. Slider shortcuts, just as you'd expect from the lock screen camera widget, the clock widget, you can change your settings in the clock widget here. Okay. And if you don't know, this is the clock widget. For this video review, I did put it back and took away the lock screen notifications that I usually have up there. Coming back, you have native theme support here. Come into your interface. This is where most of your changes will occur to the visual stylings of the phone. No uh, exposed modules are really needed. Of course, you can. And just make sure you're using Dalvik. All right. That's where your double tap to sleep is as well. Buttons and layout. Notification center. Quick settings panel. 
You can't change the number of tiles here, but you can keep adding tiles. Tiles worked fine. His sound modes here are pretty convenient. All right. And that's what you get with more. All right. So those are your customization settings. Let me go ahead and show you some of the duplication there. Here's your security. So your screen lock slide. So not terrible duplication, just a small, not even anything really noticeable. Um, there. GPS. It tracks, it locks fast and it tracks really well. I observed no issues with GPS. I did test it out. It was fully functional as a navigation. Um, no issues at all with GPS. In fact, I was quite impressed with GPS. One place I was not impressed, however, was with battery life. All right, here is 15 hours, 35 minutes, off a of charge, 31%. So not terrible, but that's only with four hours and 23 minutes of screen time. And for most phones, that would still be really good. Uh, but for the LG G2, and what I've seen and what I've been spoiled with on other ROMs, it's just not on par with what I would have expected and for the usage that uh, uh, I have with the phone. I mean, as you can see here, it's a screen in this Android system and, and play services. I did a lot of email uh, that day. I did stream some music, too. You see my little Candy Crush there. Okay. So, not, not really that impressive. Um, when we're talking about performance, let me show you here. When you first install Syage and Mod, uh, this is from the uh, snapshot. These benchmarks are from the snapshot. Uh, I got 10,202. Okay, so on the snapshot, I'm 10,202 on Dalvik, fresh install. On Art, 11,396. So you get that increase that you expect from Art. It's a significant, uh, well, it's there. It's obviously there. But is it really noticeable? I didn't really notice a huge difference when I was playing with Art um, as far as the fluidity it goes because the phone's already very fluid. Uh, with the one benchmark I could run with the Pake kernel, I got 10,846. So I tried to run a second time and it crashed. So I couldn't really get a, a good up and down. Uh, and the 10,202 was the, uh, the middle guy there. So they're about equal. And that's not with overclocking the PEG either, because the PEG kernel does support overclocking. So it, it possibly could perform a little faster with Dalvik on the PEG kernel, but I couldn't get it to stay stable enough, and I wouldn't recommend it. One of the other things I can show you here, uh, I had somebody ask about camera performance. So I did take some shots for you. Um, first, I don't know if it's going to focus in. Oh. Can't really see it too well, but uh, this is taken in natural light. Um, I'm sorry, in artificial light. I did take a photo with with a natural light too. We got some color contrast here. Uh, details show up really well. Hope it translates on video. And then we got some natural light from the wonderful snow apocalypse. Uh, you can see here. Um, Color application is very nice. This is artificial lights overcast. Still takes a very good photograph. The shutter speed is a little slow though, um, but it's fully functional. Uh, if you're going to compare it to stock, obviously the stock camera's got some advantages this camera doesn't have. Um, knock on, knock off works as you'd expect. I haven't even already showed that to you, but there was somebody in the forums who said that knock off worked on the lock screen. That is not the case. You can see here, knockoff does not work on the lock screen. Of course, however you have it set up in other ways, it does work. So if you have it set up so you can do it in the status bar, it does work. So that is functional. But being able to tap anywhere, which is what was said, is not. And I, I found that kind of interesting because another developer had said, you know, hey, if that's the case, let me go see what they're doing over there and maybe I can replicate it. So I felt bad about uh, reading that and then seeing that that wasn't the case. Expanded desktop obviously works. You see it works. It works well. I had no problem getting back. Uh, it, it, it pops up every time. Games. Uh, in games testing, of course, I only test with Real Racing, Angry Birds Go, and, uh, well, I play Candy Crush, but I've never had a phone that had an issue with Candy Crush, so I don't really count that as a test. But as far as Real Racing goes, um, something interesting that I noticed with Real Racing is on other non-LG-based ROMs, I sometimes get some skipped frames or I get some blocking 
uh, some black background blocking. I did not experience that with Cyagen Mod. In fact, uh, it was very fluid. I got no dropped frames, and uh, aside from the phone getting a little warm, which is going to happen when playing games anyways, I haven't had a single ROM that didn't get warm while playing games. Uh, I was able to pause the game, play the game, exit the game, and experience no freezes after uh, running three or four rounds with the game. So, And Angry Birds too, I didn't have any problems with Angry Birds Go. Um, and that might seem like an odd thing to test, but there are some pretty uh, decent graphics in Angry Birds Go, and I have some had some issues in other ROMs trying to uh, resync with their uh, cloud syncing services, etc. to save the game. So I, I kind of make it a point to test that now. Android user 00110001 uh, he is not the official maintainer for the uh, Cyogen mod form in the LG G2 AT&T development section. However, he did start the form, and he is a developer, and he's working on a build of Cyogen mod that will work on a kernel closer to stock LG's kernel. I'm not even going to pretend to to understand exactly how he would do that or how that would work. However, I am excited to see if this does resolve some touch issues that users have been reporting with other ROMs. DPI, obviously my DPI is set to 360 and uh, you only get four icons plus the app drawer down here at the bottom. However, when you reboot, this icon doesn't disappear. And this is important to say because in other ROMs at that DPI, that icon usually disappears down there and you see it mentioned in the forms. Does not happen with this and I've figured out why. It's because of the gaps package that I'm using. Um, I am using the Paranoid Android Modular Full February 7th build and I did see there's a new one and uh, I will test that one with my next ROM. And uh, that seems to be the cause of um, that drawer containing four icons and an app drawer and not having any issues of the dock, not having any issues whatsoever losing that icon down there at the bottom. I'll show you. There it is. So it didn't go away. So very nice. A2DP, uh, you know, I always test this. My 4Touch, it does work with text messaging. It does not do metadata, though. It will not send the song title or artist information to the head unit. Uh, it will send metadata to the Kia Uvo unit, but again, no text messaging support, and that's no surprise. Um, but uh, it does do the text messaging with my Ford Touch. As far as the forums go, um, again, if you start from the very beginning reading some of these, you're going to see it's filled with crashes and stabilities. Most of these complaints come before um, this Snapshot M3. After that, you start seeing some pretty positive reviews, some pretty positive experiences, and I don't use Titanium Backup to restore any apps, so I don't have some of the problems that are reported there and uh, because I've seen problems with that I purposely stopped using titanium backup um, so I don't report anything that's not an actual issue um, and I'm so used to setting this thing up every time that it's not even a big deal anymore people it's, it's second nature um, on another note um, going through this ROM and using this daily driver I, I can recommend I can actually recommend it and that that's uh, a big deal for me because in the past with Cyogen Mod on the LG G2, because I'd used it on my tablet before and on my uh, Galaxy Note 2 before, um, on the LG G2 it just it was rot with instabilities when I tried it last time. And uh, this go around, I got to tell you, install it, use the factory kernel, and uh, it performs just fine for me. Um, if you want to try a different camera, try a different camera. If you want to play around and see if you can't get better battery life, play around and see if you can't get better battery life. The battery life isn't terrible, but for the LG G2, it's not the best either. Um, but again, this can be improved and probably will be improved as time goes on because already the kernel is much faster and the ROM is much faster and uh, I can't say how stable it is enough. Um, I did not have any problems. So that is my review of Mod 11. I am pleasantly surprised and I hope that you will be too.